This is a backfire review, so I bought all the electronic powder dispensers under 500 bucks, and we're gonna jump straight into the speed test, no further intro. So a little bit about this test. We're all using a stick powder in each of these powder dispensers. We set a timer at the very beginning, and it has to do 10 loads. As soon as one is done, I immediately empty it out and go to the next one. The reason that I included that little time of, of dumping it out is because some of them take a little bit of time to zero when you put the tray back on the pan. But I also did some testing with ball powders, and while there was a difference in the speed that they all dispensed, they seemed to generally follow their same order, their same rank. So coming in first was this guy, the Frankfurt Arsenal IntelliDropper. This has a function where you, ex you dispense some powder and it does a powder learning thing where it learns how much is coming out with each turn and so that it can tune itself to that specific powder. The RCBS Charge Master Supreme also has that functionality. I of course did use those since it has that function for this testing. Then another note is the Hornady. The Hornady, you can turn in low, medium, or fast mode, high, and I did test medium and high here so that we can test that functionality as well. So coming in second place was the RCBS Charge Master Supreme, the Hornady in fast mode, the Lyman Gen 6, the Charge Master Lite, and coming in the rear is the Hornady when you turn that to medium mode. So let's throw some numbers on the scoreboard for speed. High numbers are good. Three points is better than one on this scale. This is where I would rank each of them. But what good is it if these things are fast at dispensing powder if they aren't accurate? And so that's what we're gonna test next after today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by iNero and also by iNero. I bet you didn't see that one coming. This portable safe for my Nero is the one that I keep in my truck to keep my firearm secure when I'm traveling. I like that there are a lot of different ways to get into it. I can use this RFID tag. I can also enter a passcode. They give you some keys that even fold to be compact, or you carry none of that, and you can just use your fingerprint. This other version is what I keep in my office right by my desk and also in my bed stand so I can access firearms that way. You have a passcode that you can enter or fingerprint again or a key in order to get in. Reviews of iNero are pretty pegged at five stars. They include all the accessories you'd want like a bracket or a cable lock. You can check out iNero at the link in the description. That's iNero at the link in the description. Be a responsible gun owner and make sure to keep your firearms secured. I'm busting out the laptop here so we can dive into some numbers. The way that I tested accuracy here is I loaded again 10 loads and I measured each one on an FX120i scale that measures down to the kernel. It's a very highly regarded scale in the industry. A lot of reloaders use it, but it's much more expensive than these. The results were pretty cool here. So of those 10 loads, the standard deviation, if you were asleep in math class in middle school, standard deviation, basically a higher number is worse and a lower number is better in this instance. You can see the RCBS light had the worst standard deviation of 0 0.0835 and the best standard deviation was the Hornady with 0 0.0311 um, standard deviation. So if that doesn't mean much to you, let's look at the extreme spread. Extreme spread just says, let's look at the load with the highest powder charge and the load with the lowest powder charge and what's the difference between them, what's the spread of them. So remember this is looking with 40, with a, a, low, a target load of 41.1 grains. And what we saw here is the RCBS light was the worst. So red is bad, green is good on this scale now. Um, so 0.26. Um, that's, that's pretty high. That's more than most reloaders would like to see um, in variance. And the lowest extreme spread was the Hornady on low mode. That's notable now. Look at this. The Hornady won in both categories, both on medium speed and in low, were the two, the two best extreme spreads on this scale. 
that's pretty darn cool. But then let's look at measuring it a different way. Let's take the target load, 41.1 grains, and that's minus then the mean load that it got with each, right? So how far away from that specific number was it? And on that, the Hornady actually didn't do so well. For me, this number doesn't matter that much. I don't necessarily care that I have exactly 41.1 grains. What I do care is that it can do a load that it calls 41.1 very consistently every single time. But what does this all mean? Um, you know, you say, okay, there's a difference of two tenths of a grain. What does that actually mean? So if we're looking at H4350 in a 6.5 Creedmoor, with a normal-ish load, there are some assumptions here, the RCBS light would generate um, 17 feet per second variation in that 10-shot sequence. 17 feet per second is because the powder charge was not as accurate. The Hornady, if we go into low mode on the Hornady, which is pretty slow, it brings the, the variation in feet per second with those same assumptions down to 6.6 .6 feet per second. Most reloaders are going to be pretty darn happy if they're only seeing 6.6 .6 feet per second in the speed of the ammunition. Usually it's other factors that are causing bigger variations than the, pow than the powder is. But if you're wondering, you know, do I need the scale that's going to go down to a kernel or is one of these going to do it for me? Hopefully this number will give you a general idea of just how precise you need to be. The Hornady Auto Charge Pro did win in terms of accuracy. The others, there wasn't a big difference. They were all pretty darn similar, except for that Charge Master Lite. Let's look at price. All of these are reasonably economical choices. I mean, they're all under $500, but some are as cheap as $220 and some are closer to that $500 price point. And so I'm not going to give exact numbers of the price here. It's not that I'm trying to be vague. It's that every time I mention a specific price in a review, I come back to that video a year later and it's just getting like 10 comments a day like, this is totally bogus. That's not the price because the prices change, especially under <clears throat> inflation world that we're in, right? So I was bothered a little bit by some of the objective testing that I did here because it didn't take into account just the usability, uh, just what it feels like, the build quality, the warranty, trying to call their customer service, and the in-depth testing I did with each one. So I wanna talk about each one and give them kind of a usability or a gym score. So let's start with the Frankfurt Arsenal IntelliDropper. This is a heck of a scale. It is cheap, but it did die on me in testing. The touchscreen just, some of the buttons work and some of them you press it and it just stopped, right? And so that's why you saw in the speed test that this video looked a little bit different. I had to ask you guys if you would help to send a video in to test this thing um, using the same steps that I was. I called Frankfurt Arsenal about fixing this thing and I was troubled by their response. It's out of stock everywhere right now and they ran out of inventory and so even those who are under warranty, they don't have enough machines to be replacing them. You're just stuck for like three or four months until they get back. Another problem I've had with this thing is these buttons have a big gap on the bottom and powder can easily get underneath the buttons. And sometimes you can still press the button, but I'll start getting weird charges and stuff and it's just drifting and stuff. And it's because I got a tiny bit of powder under there they really should have some kind of block above these buttons. Next up, the Lyman. It just feels dinky compared to the build quality of really all the rest. It just feels kind of cheap. The footprint is really small. If you're in a very small space that you're reloading, that is awesome. It's been reliable. I haven't had any reliability issues with it, but I also have a lot less history with this thing. There is one confounding UI thing, the mode button on everything. Mode is to switch from manual to auto, right? You know, when I put the tray back, do I want it to auto start or do I want to have to press dispense every time? That's what the mode button does on all the other powder dispensers that I know of. Here, mode switches between grains and grams and ounces. 
that should be called units, right? It's just kind of weird. Zeroing all of the scales was easy. I didn't even need to look up directions. It was pretty intuitive, except for this Lyman that just has a very basic interface and I wasn't totally sure what it was doing. At the end of it, it didn't have like any calibration complete or anything, so I wasn't sure how to do it. Fortunately, I looked it up on YouTube and my buddy Gavin and Guy from Ultimate Reloader had a great video that taught me how to do it. Thanks, guys. So the UI is a little bit weird, but it is a very simple device once you kind of figure it out. The motor is quite a bit louder than the other ones, and this chute here to dispense the powder is just confounding. You can easily get powder built at the bottom and then you can't open the chute and stuff. Overall, it just wasn't my favorite dispenser, but it isn't bad and it performed well in the objective tests. The Charge Master Supreme. When I unboxed all these guys and started doing the testing, I really expected this thing to just win. The build quality is really nice. The buttons work really well. It has an app with this Charge Master Supreme, or if you get the Link version, uh, the RCBS Link, it has the Bluetooth capabilities. I kind of thought that was gonna be a gimmick, but when I started using the app, like calibrating it using the app was so nice that it could like tell me what's happening, but it is also the most expensive. And I had a very poor experience with customer support from RCBS. I called them and they, and you know, it's just a message, yeah, we'll, we'll call you back. And it, it was a couple of hours before I got a call back. And so you have to have like a, afternoon where you're not doing anything and you can answer the phone. And so I kept calling them and then I would get busy doing other things and I couldn't do it when they call back. You know, the other companies I call and they answer the phone and it's somebody knowledgeable and they fixed my problem. But overall, the Charge Master Supreme did do well in the testing and the objective tests. The usability is great. It's very well built. And so if you have a Charge Master Supreme, you have a really good machine. Next up is Hornady's Auto Charge Pro. Um, it reminds me of a popcorn maker that we had when I was a kid. I really like the compact form factor. And then also right here where they have their logo, tell me, you can't tell me that doesn't remind you of the Etch-A-Sketch logo on the red thing. Remember the little thing with the knobs? Anyway, I digress. I have waited on recording this portion of the video because I really have been liking this one and I wanna make sure I'm doing my due diligence that I know everything I possibly can about this machine. So it has a high, medium, and low setting and I really feel like that's the killer feature here because on low, we see a significant jump in the accuracy of the powder dispensing. On medium and high, you're really pretty quick. It's mostly keeping up with some of the better ones out here. It's not the fastest, but it's one of the fastest here. But if you increase the speed and decrease the time, the time is how long it's going to trickle that last portion and the speed is how fast you want it to trickle, then it really can get pretty snappy. But you are risking some more overcharges. There are a couple confounding things on it. For example, the setting button. I saw that and I thought, oh great, I can go in and configure all the settings. No, those are presets. Like you could save some presets in there. I don't know why they didn't just call that presets instead of settings. Also, you have to enter enter and eight to switch between low, medium, and high. They have all these buttons. Why enter eight? Who picked this, right? And enter six is to kind of reset to factory settings. So it's annoying when there are those type of things, especially when there is a touch panel, it's annoying that you have to go into the manual, manual to figure out some things. But other than that, I found it very easy to use. I found the scale to be not picky at all. Like you put the tray on and bam, it goes. It, it's not kind of wobbling, you know, back and forth. It just kind of feels more stable than a lot of them. The Charge Master Lite. No, you're not seeing doubles. There are two of them. These are twins. The reason there are twins is I bought this guy and it died on me. Just, it was just giving just crazy numbers and I just couldn't get it to, to go normal. That's frustrating to me. Uh, you know, I also burned out an IntelliDropper. I do use powder dispensers pretty heavy and so that can be expected, but this one just didn't last quite as long as I really thought it should. All right, will you shut up already and give us a conclusion? Well, here it is. I think the best scale in this test, in my opinion, is the Hornady Auto Charge Pro. 
I feel like the killer feature here is being able to dial in and make this a very fine scale when you're wanting to load up some precision ammo or put it in high mode and you can really crank out some range ammo as well. The number two has to go to the RCBS Charge Master Supreme. It's a heck of a machine. I really like the app there. In my testing, it wasn't quite as accurate as the Hornady Auto Charge Pro, but it still was very reliable and a good machine. If you're wanting to drop down and spend a little bit less than either one of these machines, that's where it gets complicated. So I've been using the Frankfurt Arsenal IntelliDropper for the last year and a half, and it's been great, but it died on me. I had an RCBS Lite, it also died on me, and so how could I possibly re recommend one of those? The Lyman Gen 6 was fine in testing. It feels a little bit dinky, the interface is very basic, but it did work reliably, and so maybe that's what I would recommend. But also, maybe I just got a lemon of that Frankfurt Arsenal IntelliDropper. I just got unlucky, it can happen. I really did like a lot of features on that one, and so... I'll just give you the information and you can decide what you think. Be sure to check in the description of this video where I can send you over to my blog post where I have affiliate links to these scales.